what we are looking uh, at, we are looking at the more sort of ambitious thing. So if we're looking at the bone and all kind of the canals that are present in the bone and how it links everything. So we're looking at two things so that the bone has the good kind of uh, hydraulic connections with the surrounding interstitial tissues. And most importantly, the big question for us is that how much of the additional fascia and the muscular interfaces the bone can sustain right so in that sense if we're looking at the bone we should never uh, look at it in a kind of one to one ratio right so one to one ratio this is just the sort of cross section of the bone but what is the thing that we are really interested in is that the most important part is that okay uh, first thing which is important of course is that this first one which is the size of the bone and its kind of composition holding on well that's important that that's very very positive and uh, great but we actually want the better ratio right because the true relationship of the bone periosteum to say uh, the support and tensional kind of contribution that it can provide to the muscle, okay, say, let's roughly say 1 to 10, right? So, and hers is, let's say, 1 to 1. And this is the biggest reason why she doesn't grow. So, there's no kind of grip there. And, of course, then we also have to put the fat into the same mix. And it's the same story. You know, if we look at the skin, so the skin... Also, there is a actual size, but then the next question is that skin to fat. What kind of multiplication factor? How much of those, how much it can sustain? And that's what we are really looking for, this kind of bridge and connection between the bones and the, and the, uh, and the, uh, and, and the skin. But on the other hand, right, so we also have to remember that the flat bones, particularly the bones of the pelvis, chest, and so on, the flat bones in particular. So these are the ones where the, uh, you know, where the, the the production of the blood cells is happening. So that's the hematopoiesis. So and that is also important thing from that same perspective. So the intensity of this process is another question. So that's why. I'm happy to hear that with the vibration exercises, the good, the sort of this background bone health is there. But of course, we have greater ambition, right? We want more. We want this bone not just, you know, not to be in that state of just kind of a, uh, you know, like not a liability, but we want the bone to be more, right? Remember, I use this uh, kind of. Um, example several times so if we look for example at the back so or, and uh, this kind of problematic areas or let's take the hip right so you see we we get into the, the position when the hip is a troublemaker which is kind of the minus the negative thing so then as we work we want to bring it to the next level when it be, it becomes a passenger so it doesn't help anybody, but it doesn't create problems. So, and then that's the position of the contributor. And then that's the leader, right? So you see, that's, these, are the th these are the evolutions that you're looking. And when we talk about the bone, so when we see these changes, what does it, when we see this confirmation that the good bone health, health is there, so it tells us that, okay, it's a very good thing that the bone is not a troublemaker there, right? So it's kind of more of a passenger. But our ambition is, of course, we want the bone to become more. We want the bone to start being the contributor. And this contributor being in sort of three dimensions, from the periosteum, as immediate contributor to the deep fascia and the interstitial link there. So as the bone skin connection, the one that facilitates the fat development and 
probably the most important there is the bone as the contributor to the uh, blood production. So these are the three things that we want to encourage, and that's why I'm, um, I'm kind of looking for the new ways of getting there, right? And that's where I think that this kind of mini vibration gun is going to be a very good tool, and uh, yeah, and it's going to be also easy to use, and it's also kind of, it's quite silent, very soft, very nice, and, and that also brings us back into this aspect of the constipation, which has been historically the issue, and it's the same story, right, so that when the periosteum of the iliac is not providing that good enough lining, so we don't have enough there, so like this grip, which would be keeping the intra-abdominal pressure sort of channeled in a in a good way so these are this kind of entry points that i wanted to uh, to highlight